In this video, I will walk you through Insta360 Studio version 4, and I will show you some examples of how to reframe 360 video. So let's get started. First, let's take a look at the new interface of Insta360 Studio. To import your Insta360 files locally, find the Insta360 files on your computer. Do not change the file names because you may accidentally corrupt to your footage. Insta360 reads these file names, so it's best not to change it. There are always two files per 5.7K 360 video, so do not delete any of these files. And there is one INSV file per 3K or 4K 360 video. Highlight the files you wish to import and drag and drop it into Insta360 Studio. Local files is where you can drag and drop your Insta360 files stored on your computer. Camera files will load your Insta360 files from an SD card plugged into your computer. Favorites will keep the files you need in one place by clicking the star button and then these files will be saved in your favorites folder. And export queue is where you can start batch exporting multiple shots. In the drop down, you can sort your files and you can change the file view to thumbnail, detailed or a list view. I prefer the thumbnail view so I can see a preview of the file I want to work with. I deleted the LRV files to save space on my computer, but if you want a smooth editing experience in Insta360 Studio, then keep the LRV files with your INSV files because they will act as a proxy file in Insta360 Studio. The reframe tab is to reframe your 360 video as well as exporting your immersive 360 videos. The 360 view tab will let you see an unedited view of your 360 video. And you can also set the view to an equirectangular format and snapshot an immersive 360 photo from your 360 video. Let's head back into the reframe tab so I can show you how to reframe 360 videos. The timeline has changed in this version of Insta360 Studio. The time is not shown on the timeline, which makes things a little bit harder than before. Now you have to hover your mouse over the timeline to see a thumbnail and the time. Here, you can zoom in and out the timeline. The aspect ratio can be changed at a click of a button into a TikTok aspect ratio or a YouTube aspect ratio. You can take a snapshot of this frame and you can full screen the player to see a bigger view of your video. Trim start point and end point will mark the start and end of your video clip. Adding keyframes is how you will reframe your 360 video. Deep track will track a subject on the screen and time shift will add speed to your video. The video settings are now tucked away in these icons. Under stabilization, you should probably leave flow stay on all the time to make sure you have really steady video. If you want your 360 video center point to follow the direction of your front camera lens, then you can turn on direction lock. Under stitching, you can choose any of these settings depending on which accessory you are using. It's definitely worth checking whether dynamic stitching and chromatic calibration turned on will improve your video. If not, just turn it off. If you are having stitching issues, then another thing you can try is stitching calibration. In media processing, if you shot footage underwater, then you can turn on AquaVision 2.0. If you're talking to the camera or doing action, then you can try to improve the audio quality by selecting voice focus or action focus. In logo setting, you can try add your own logo in the nadir of your 360 video. Project management is a pretty cool feature. Say you want to make another edit of this same footage, you can now make a new project and have multiple edits of this same footage so you don't lose your previous edits. And finally, file properties will show you information about your video file. Now let's reframe some 360 videos. So to edit this first shot, I'm going to select where I want my shot to begin and mark this as the start of my video. The next thing you need to do is select the duration of your shot. So I'm going to make it 10 seconds long. So I'll click at the 10 second mark and mark this as the end of my shot. Then I'll go to the beginning of my shot 
add a keyframe. So now I can choose how the beginning of my shot will look. I'm going to pan to look towards myself. At the beginning of this shot, I want to reveal myself cycling. So I'm going to tilt down towards the road, but I want to get rid of this fisheye distortion. So I'm going to reduce the distortion to 0.2. I will increase the field of view, which is also the same as zooming out. And I'm going to tilt down 90 degrees towards the road. If you make a mistake, you can click the undo button over here. I'm going to move forward around two seconds, add a keyframe and tilt up to reveal myself. For the next second, I want to hold this view so the audience can see I am cycling. So I'll add a keyframe and not make any changes. Then over the next four seconds, so at the seventh second, I want to add a barrel roll. So I'll add a keyframe. I will click roll and change this value to 360. And this will add one rotation. And then at the end of my video, I'm going to add another keyframe and change the field of view to 100. So I'm just zooming out a little bit and this will just keep the camera movement dynamic. So if I play back this shot, you now have a reveal shot, holds for a second, then a four second barrel roll, and then a slow zoom out. Now I'm going to add this shot to the export queue. So to do this, click export. Under reframed video, choose a file name, choose where you want to save the file to. I'm going to change the resolution to 4K. So I'll type in 3840 and it automatically populates to 160. For high quality video, I'm gonna change the bit rate to 100 megabits per second. Since I shot this in H.265, I'm gonna change the encoding format to H.265. If you have grain in your video, then you can click remove grain. In this shot, I don't have any grain, so I'll leave it off. And I'm going to add this shot to the queue, so I don't have to export this video right now. I'm going to edit the other two shots, add it to the queue, and then export all the shots when I finish editing. So add to queue, and I can export this video a little bit later. Now let's go and edit the second shot. I will turn the second shot into a time shift shot. So first I'll go to where I want this shot to begin and mark this as the start of the shot. Then I'll go to where I want this shot to end and mark this as the end of the shot. Go to the beginning of the shot, click the time shift button, and then you'll see this red bar appear with the two times speed. Click where you want to apply the speed so I'll apply this speed to the entire shot and click to apply it. I'm going to increase the speed to four times and close it. Now I'm going to reframe this shot. So at the beginning of the shot, I'm going to add a keyframe. And another way to reframe your video is to click and drag the preview screen and you'll see the numbers update here automatically. So now I'm just gonna scroll through my shot and update the keyframes when I need to adjust it. So through here, it's pretty straight. So I don't need to add any keyframes. I'll add one over here just before it bends. And then I'll go forward after the bend and just make sure it's straight. And I'll keep moving forward. Now I'll add one more at the end of the shot. And add a keyframe here. So now we have something which looks like this. And if you want to get rid of the motion blur in your time shift, you can click the motion blur button here. 
If you want to adjust the speed, click the speed and I'm going to increase it to six times speed. So now I have a eight second shot. Now you have a time shift shot, which looks like this. So I'm going to add this shot to the export queue. So I'll click export, reframed video, choose a file name, choose a file path. I'll change the resolution to 4K, so 3840 by 2160. I'll change the bitrate to 100 megabits per second for a high quality video. I shot this video in H.265, so I'll change the encoding format to H.265. There is no grain in my shot, so I'll leave remove grain off and add it to the queue. Now let's edit the third and final shot. For this shot, I'm going to go from a normal view to a tiny planet view back to a normal view. So first, I'm gonna to go to where I want my shot to begin, which is over here, and mark this as the start of my shot. And I want this shot to be seven seconds long. So I will click here and mark this as the end of my shot. Then I'll go to the beginning of my shot, add a keyframe, and drag the position I want and then I'll move forward one second in the timeline and add a keyframe to maintain this view. Then I'll move forward another second in the timeline. So the second second, add a keyframe and click the tiny planet button to turn it into a tiny planet. Then for the next three seconds up to the fifth second. I'm going to maintain this tiny planet view and also roll it around. So I'm going to type in minus 360. And I'm also going to add a little zoom while it rolls. And in the next second, I'm going to add a keyframe and turn it back into a natural view. Then at the end of the shot, I'll add another keyframe and just zoom out a little bit to make it more dynamic. So if I play this shot back, you have a natural view into a tiny planet view, which rolls around back to a natural view with a slow zoom out. So now this final shot is ready to export. Click export. Reframed video, choose a file name, path. I'll make it a 4K video. I'll change the bit rate to 100 megabits per second. Encoding format H.265. There's no grain in my video, so I'll leave it off and click add to queue. So now I have three shots which are ready to export. To start exporting all your videos, click export all. And now your videos will begin batch exporting. And that's it. If you want to convert your 360 video from an INSV file to an MP4 file, so you can import it into any video editor of your choice, you can do this in the reframe tab. You can either export your entire 360 video, or you can choose to export a section of your 360 video by marking the start and end points of your shot. Then go to export, 360 video, choose a file name and where you want to save your 360 video. The resolution is automatically set to 5760 by 2880 and the default bitrate is 169. I'm going to leave those settings as it is. I shot this video in H.265 so I'm going to change the encoding format to H.265. If your video has grain then you can check remove grain but my video is okay so I'm going to leave remove grain unchecked. If you're going to batch export many 360 videos, then add the video to a queue. But if you want to export this video straight away, then click start export instead. Now you know how to use Insta360 Studio. Hit the like button if you learned something new, subscribe to learn more, and I'll see you in the next video.